Hello everyone, this is Cole Anderson, as usual, your host on The Independent Pianist. And today I have a little Christmas bonbon for you, the famous Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy in Mikhail Pletnev's arrangement for solo piano. The Sugar Plum Fairy is the queen of the land of sweets and the consort of the Cavalier, rescued by Clara from the Mouse King in the first act, the titular uh, Nutcracker. It's a fairly silly plot, which Tchaikovsky was fully aware of, but he was inspired here by the brand new uh, Celesta to create music of extraordinarily evocative beauty. Uh, the Celesta is well known now, it hardly needs an introduction, but at the time it had just been invented in France, and Tchaikovsky was very excited about this new instrument, and even mentioned in a letter that he wanted to be sure to use it as quickly as possible before rimsky korsakov could get a chance to beat him to it. The celesta is very similar to a piano, the difference being that the hammer strikes a metal plate or a bar of some kind instead of a string. And that's what gives the sound this kind of shimmery, magical quality that seems to float over the air. Generally, you'll hear it cited that the Nutcracker was the very first piece to even use the Celesta, but this is actually not the case. Uh, the very first use of it was in Ernest Chausson's incidental music for Shakespeare's Tempest. This was written in 1888, so a full four years before the Nutcracker. This actually makes sense since the uh, Celesta was in fact invented in France. Uh, Tchaikovsky himself even used it once before the Nutcracker. That was in his symphonic poem uh, Voyevoda in 1891. So the Nutcracker was actually the third usage that I know of anyway when it came out in 1892. So this arrangement of course for piano solo is by Mikhail Pletnev. Uh, Pletnev is one of the greatest and most idiosyncratic of pianists, conductors, uh, who were born in the mid 20th century. He is a fabulous conductor as well, which puts him in good stead for making arrangements of orchestral music. If you've run into this arrangement before, you might be somewhat surprised to hear my version. I play it very differently from how you usually hear it done, including by Platinum himself. He plays it, for example, in a more brittle, edgy kind of way. I grew up with a very different sound in my ear for this piece. Of course, I've, I've known this piece since I was a young child. Um, so I hope you'll bear with me here and give my version a chance. Expanding on that, you know, when I was a kid, my first introduction to the Nutcracker, like a lot of American children probably, was through Disney's Fantasia, the original Fantasia from the 40s. Of course, that performance was conducted by none other than the legendary Leopold St Stokowski with the equally legendary Philadelphia Orchestra. Uh, if you don't know that much about Stokowski, he was an incredible forerunner uh, in the orchestral world. Uh, he actually conducted the premieres of many of Rachmaninoff's works, including uh, the second concerto and the Rhapsody on the theme of Paganini with the composer at the piano. And he had many quite strikingly original ideas that he applied with his orchestras. For example, the concept of free bowing in which the members of the string section would be allowed to come up with their own bowings instead of having to follow the uh, leader of the section, which Stokowski insisted resulted in this kind of fluid, organic sound that he got from the string sections in his orchestras. The Philadelphia Orchestra, of course, was famous for its luscious string sound. So anyway, that original version from Fantasia is still one of my favorites to this day. Generally, Stokowski doesn't get enough credit, I think, as a, as a true artist. He was really extraordinarily imaginative, and there are details in his version of this movement that you won't hear in anyone else else's and it's so unique and powerful. So I probably can't help myself. I'm sure there are certain details in my own performance that call that one to mind if you're familiar with it. I know that my tempo is much slower than many people take and I use a lot of the pedal in the opening section and I add some arpeggios and uh, tenutos and so forth on certain notes. All this is really to try to conjure up the sound of the celeste here as much as I possibly can and avoid anything that's really pianistic sounding. So all questions of interpretation aside, this arrangement is really wonderful. Uh, it quite surpasses all previous arrangements, and it's much harder than you might think. In particular, I would like to highlight a little detail from the beginning, which doesn't sound that hard, but which is really remarkably tricky. And it shows Pletniv's sensitivity to detail and his complete mastery of all elements of piano technique. Pletniv places the bass clarinet line in the left hand, and he uses finger substitutions to uh, sustain this line while at the same time continuing the pizzicato chords that the strings are playing. So finger substitutions are when you change your fingers on one key without striking the key again. So you, the note just continues to sound, but you're changing your fingers. So it looks kind of like, uh, I can use this as an example. It looks kind of like this, like you're changing your finger 
silently on the key. So it's, it's quite a tricky little device, but very helpful once you master it. So as you can see, you have to keep kind of swinging your hand back and forth, constantly changing fingers silently. It's very hard to do that actually in such a short space of time. You have to have a very relaxed hand and have developed your agility to a great degree to carry this off, but it adds a kind of subtle three-dimensional quality to the sound, which is what I'm always aiming for in piano playing at any rate. So there are little details like that, as well as how he expands textures and fills out the sound, and it really makes the difference in this arrangement as compared to previous arrangements. So so there is an arrangement by uh, Taneyev and also one by Tchaikovsky himself of the complete ballet score. So I won't delay your musical enjoyment of this short little piece any further, but please uh, enjoy the performance and stay tuned for some Christmassy list music next week. I have kind of a special upload planned. And of course, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, or whatever holiday you might be celebrating. And until next week, uh, please take care and keep practicing.